another second time, Pa. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Um, have you got the uh, have you got the audio still coming through from the uh, intro there? There we go. It's gone. <laughs> I'm good. Are we good? Are you good? How's I'm everything, good. Pa? How are you? Hi, I'm Paul Wheels. I'm your presenter today. Um, I'm from Eddy Link, and we're here to uh, give you some guidance and support for the 2020 Vision hack that was launched yesterday. If you missed that, it is available on HackerEarth.com, and uh, you should post a link somewhere. Uh, okay. <laughs> Bit of a technical issue there. I had uh, I had streams coming through my ears. So sorry about that, Raymond. How are you? Good. So you're talking about we had a hack that launched yesterday. Can you tell us more about that first? Yeah. Thanks for the thanks for the reminder there. Okay. So. Link are launching a hack. Uh, well, actually launched it yesterday. So what's the hack about? Well, it's about giving you the opportunity to win $10,000 and a go-to-market partnership um, with your prototype. But what for? We're looking for industrial solutions. We're looking for to fix problems um, in uh, manufacturing, distribution, uh, workplace safety, and also um, uh, energy as well. And what we mean by that is um, we want you to help us find solutions using um, computer vision and uh, with edge computing as well. Mm -hmm. So the hacks uh, are now live. Um, we uh, have a series of live streams, which is this today, which is uh, Raymond's going to talk you through using Intel OpenVINO. And uh, you've got the opportunity to win Intel Neuralstick 2. There's 100 of them to grab. Um, Phase one will be a submission of 400 words um, in the format of a use case, telling us what the problem is, the solution you can um, create, um, the return of investment, be it um, time uh, or money, and also the social toll. What's the impact and uh, potential risk with the technology? February 5th, we will announce the 10 winners that will move to the prototype stage. They'll receive a free Visi AI developer kit, which includes AdLink Edge Vision Platform, and applications, and also includes OpenVINO um, for you to build your prototype on. And we'll support you through the whole hack as well, um, but uh, in specifically in phase two, you will have access to a direct Slack channel um, with mentors from Intel, OpenVINO, and AD Link. Great. So Paul, so today I guess it's my turn to talk about the tutorial, right? It sure is. And yep. Well, before we start, uh, I can introduce myself a little bit again. Um, so Paul and I work together. I'm from Intel, and I'm the software evangelist for Intel. Uh, in particular, we have a product called OpenVINO. Uh, it stands for Open Visual Inference Neural Network Optimizations. Yeah, it's hard to remember. I remember that. Uh, and why we do that is uh, we have a lot of hardware like from Intel around the globe. So you have CPU, you have VPU, you have GPU, you have everything that runs in different server, different platform. So we want to unify this and give you one tool that runs it for all. But not just run it for all, but run it better. Because we're going through a set of optimization steps that will take you years, maybe many years, without even, like, if you're trying today, um, to get to that level of performance. So today I'll go through a sequence of steps, how you can install, how you can download, and how you can basically, you know, get some results and share to your friends. Uh, all right, so let's get started. I'll go full screen on this one so you have no border. Can you see that, Paul? Yeah. Uh, so I talk about OpenFINO a little bit. Uh, and we talk about building things with OpenFINO, right? So you can think about today when you think about AI applications, you won't be going from scratch usually from, let's say, mm, let's capture millions of photos from scratch. Let's collect your data set. Oftentimes, you're in the industry, you may have problem, let's say, with um, logistics. You want to track the labels and boxes. You may already want to use a training model that already support that kind of system. So that's why we support something called the open model too. You can think about it as like we take a lot of open source platforms, uh, model, I mean, model open frameworks like TensorFlow, uh, Cafe, and you, we, we take those for you and then you can use them like uh, object detection, recognitions, et cetera, et cetera in our system. What we do is we take those models and optimize through various steps. And those technical steps today, I'm not going to go through. We have a set of tutorial again to show you how you can get those kind of done. We even have publications from Intel. Uh, I can link you over. But think about your problem with test recognitions, image processing, even human post. Let's say we want to track your body. We actually provide you the model already off the shelf immediately to use. 
So, for example, for real, if you think about human post, we, if you do want to do this about 10 years ago, which is what I tried, uh, while I was doing my PhD in school, I was trying to do this human post thing so I can have a 3D camera on my head and then seeing how people walk, things like that. Today, with Intel, you can do this in real time on your CPU at a 1080p for free. So back then, I have to get 3D camera. I have to have a special setup. It only runs off only on my machine. But today, you can deploy this immediately. Oh, you can see me flexing my muscle there. <laughs> so if you're doing object recognition, you want to do things like related to, um, let's say, your business. Then we provide something like a YOLO. Uh, not not live one for one. It's like, I forgot the extra names for some reason. You only see it once or only- You only like, look once. Look once, yeah. Sorry, no more jokes. Uh, but if you can see in here, I was holding a banana still. So it recognizes recognize it very well. Uh, and the person, etc. And these also we provide as a free demo you can run immediately today off the shelf. So that's why we really care about our user because this optimization, optimization step, uh, we support it. Is a universal enough that so today if you are trying to use a Intel hardware, it comes with it. So when it comes to deployment, this is also in the pain point we find from OpenFino is we work with a lot of partners. And they all have the own way of finding, like trying to put this to in a scale, right? So what we're doing here is we unify the experience so that when you're deploying the system in a let's say a warehouse, a large scale we can help you to do the management for free as well. So we provide you all this tool like uh, Dockers, um, like uh, even we have uh, AWS, even different cloud services like Azure for Microsoft. So that way you can deploy a system at a scale without worrying about what will happen. So to summarize, this is what we're doing. We're trying to give you, let's say, we have an idea of, let's say, from IoT, from self-driving, from anything. You get into a training model. Now we support a self-open model. You can go through our optimizers. And then today I will show you exactly from the middle how it runs. I'll show you the source code. So it's not just talking to this real tutorial. And we'll show you some of the library supported and how we can deploy it to different hardware with only one line of code change. And just, just to uh, say as well, if anybody has any questions that's watching today, if you'd like to um, just put it in the comments on the channel that you're on, uh, we can um, uh, respond to you with any queries. Mm -hmm. And a good catch today, if you listen carefully, we do have a stake that you can win. It's, hold on, I have it. Oh, right here, behind me. So today, if you follow the tutorial profile, you share it to the internet, you will see this. I'll give you more instruction. But to the failure of you know, the AI default today, you do the hack, what you want to do is, you want to make sure you get the right performance, right? So this will give you the performance you need to prove your point, because oftentimes you're building prototype, it's so slow that your boss will say it's not gonna work. And it's streamlined the development so that you don't have to worry about a lot of like, I've called it like potholes. You just have to like avoid those in the early time so you can speed up your process. And lastly, you can deploy it so you can show the scale for others. So there's a lot of demo. You can go on our website and take a look on OpenFino. Uh, but today I'll talk about one example that I think if you ever do any machine learning courses, you'll learn this already. It's an image classifications, you know, the dog and cat problem kind of thing. So today we're gonna go into that and then we're gonna show you how to run it with the source code. So first, if you ever use TensorFlow, this is how it look like. With TensorFlow, uh, I'll say there's three major steps. One is you import the library, the pre li uh the model. Uh, and those basically is like things that have been done by, let's say the research experts. They already turn all the knobs and getting that called a frozen graph, where they, it's like a little brain you train so that it can recognize things, so it can do inference. So inference is a step where you basically, okay, here's an input, inference engine will make a decision for you in some way, give you a probability what that approximately is. And then this is the sequence of steps you usually will get. Pre-training model, pre-processing, you gotta make sure the image fit to that model and then you do the inference. So in this case, I show, I'll show you like, okay, we're gonna show how to figure out what the image is. Classification, right? Classification is like, um, is it like a cup? Is it like a dog? Is it a person? So things like that. It's like a, you're classifying what type of object that is. So in this case, I'm using something called Inception 3.3. 3. 
Uh, and then this is the kind of the workflow you see. With us, OpenFino, what you do is instead of running through the model you download from TensorFlow, you run it through an optimizer where we'll do this kind of set of operations. And then the last step was the source code attack. So literally one line of code with a parameters. So you have something like a parameter size and all that. But in short, what happened is we got to do something really smart. Like we got to do something like a linear operating field thing. Uh, we got to group all the convolution field thing, model cutting. So there's are many things that we do to reduce the size, to optimize the cache behavior. And to most importantly, <laughs> is actually to optimize on the hardware so that we can using all the goodies like the instruction sets and everything on the hardware. What you get out from this is basically the same workflow, but we replace the central piece, right? You still have your image coming in. You still have your output looks normal, but in between that step, we're going to replace with something called OpenFino optimized model. And you get two files instead of one, instead of a PD file, which you have worked with TensorFlow before. And then now you have two that you can use. So now with that, what will happen is instead of running the TensorFlow, you will just run TensorFlow still. We can do all this TensorFlow stuff. But in between the step, you can now replace that engine, the inference engine with our code. So in here, there's a couple lines of code. You load the engine. So that's the IE core, the inference engine. IE stands for inference engine. You read the network, as you show, the one that you convert in the last step. You know the network. Then you still do the pre-processing of the image. Make sure that it fit to the network and you run it. But the key is right here. You see on this on this step, no network node network. That's well, hard to say. You can switch between CPU, GPU, FPGA, which is uh, the one we can provide later. Uh, the stick. Oops. Then you can run it on stick, or you can do a combinations, which I find is the coolest thing ever. For example, now you can mix between CPU, GPU, and the neural stick at the same time to get the maximum performance from your your multi-architectural hardware. So how it works at the end, it looks like this. You still get the flow from input. You can do the pre-train model, everything. But now you have the options to choose between different hardware in runtime. So you don't have to recompile any of the source code. You run the same Python code, but you just change one flag. So what we get from this is um, if you are in the industry, you end up with a lot of performance like related benchmarking. So we did all this heavy lifting for you. So if you're selecting one of the hardware today, you will know what your throughput you are getting with the code, let's say the library. And more importantly, we even help you to optimize your cost. So right now, if you choose this processor for your workload, most likely you'll get the best, best dollar per FPS, right? So you want to optimize that cost and also maybe minimizing your thermal and things like that. So. Today, we're going to talk about this collab. <clears throat> so if you have any question, you can stop me here. If not, I'll go directly into yeah. the tutorial. Oh, yep. Henry, we've got, we've got a question here from John Barker. Hi, John. Um, can you load data set for transfer learning um, on device? Transfer learning. You're so, this is my next blog. I cannot tell you too much yet, but you're exactly on spot. Yes, we have an engineer did a robotic related system with transfer learning. It's coming up. It's coming up. Follow us on Twitter now. Brilliant. It's literally it's coming up. I cannot say too much. It's still work in progress. So, so the answer is not yet. Or is it, it it, we have a prototype. It's not official in our system, but okay. we have a proof of concept. Yeah. That so, works. so where can people uh, keep updated on the, on the progress of that? Uh, actually, that's exactly why we have this channel. Let's talk to me on LinkedIn um, or Twitter, and we can have this follow up conversation for many of that. Okay, brilliant. Yes, thanks, John. So now uh, we will have this classification demo, which is the link. You can screenshot now if you want, but we're going to share it on YouTube, and then Paul will do that for me right now. So what this demo will do is um, we're going to show you how you can run the demo and also win our neural stake. So the way it works is um, I'm going to open the demo now. I'm going to show you how to download and build it, and your job is do exactly that, but instead of just running it, you got to modify a little bit and share it to your friends on your output. And why this is important is um, I got to do the demo now. Uh, Paul, can you pause the share screen for a second? So yeah, I can do some sure. switching. All right. 
I'm just going to dig out your uh, LinkedIn profile to share that as well. Thank you, sir. So let's share my Chrome tab. All right. So let me know you're ready. Okay. Whenever you're ready, buddy. Uh, so the tab is share. Can you see it? Uh, no, uh, wait, no, it's gone. No, it's not, that, gone. not that one. Yes. You need to share again. Share. All right. Don't worry. I got back up. I got two tabs. That's why. <laughs> All right. So it's, it's, it's ready. You can share that now. Okay. There so what you're looking at right now is if you open the link, uh, so, okay. It's been chested. Yep. Perfect. When you open the link, you will be welcomed by this table of content on your left and also a set of instruction and code on the right. So the whole thing is written in Python uh, slash with some Linux, uh, I would say scripts. What it's doing is um, this is running something called the Colab from Google. What it'll do is it will find a machine for you so you don't have to get your machine today. It's like say you're using a Chromebook or using a cell phone, you can run this. But what it will do is it will install OpenFino, as you see, and also run what I just talked about in the tutorial. So today we're going to do exactly that image classification in real time. So what happened now is um, I'm going to walk through a couple of steps, what we've done and then what you should do to change a little bit and how you can get to the next results. So here you can see um, we have the install step. So with OpenFino, we provide many ways to do installation. We even support app get install. So with Ubuntu, you can do this. And with a couple lines of code here, it will set up, set up the environment for your development. So if you're developed today, this is all you need to do. This chunk of code, you can copy and paste, and you're ready to set up your Linux machine in two lines, in maybe one minute, literally, depending on your network speed, OK? I have a very good one here. So once it's installed, you can see once it's installed, I run a validation demo for you. So you can actually go into this script later and take a look what we have done. Uh, what the validation demo is doing is to show you, OK, if I ever run this, uh, let's say classification uh, squeeze net, I think that's the name of it. Uh, I want to get some results out. So you will welcome by a demo results. Sounds like, looks like this. Oops, sorry. We basically provide them a sport car. And then the sport car will be recognized with a probability, for example. So this is one example of, let's say, how we do image classification. Also help you to validate your installation is correct. Now, the next step is I show you exactly all the step it takes to, in, to use TensorFlow together with OpenFino. So I'm still doing the import library here. So I import the OS, TensorFlow, and also the application in, inception fee free. And I download the model this time. So remember, I talked about we need to optimize our model. So now you download it. So these are the code that represent downloading the model. And we do the conversion. So this step is what you need to learn from OpenFino. Is if you have a, your own model, we have a set of um, guidelines or instruction how to run this. So you have to provide parameter and data type. This is important because you can switch the accuracy by having different quantization. So in this case, I'm using 32 floating point. You can go down to like in eight, something like that. So that is something we learned is for certain hardware, you may get better performance out from that. And we have a matrix of things that we show you what's supported in different hardware. And that is something you have to be really careful. And once you learn it, you just like, it's natural to you. Then lastly, you have to provide the input shape and things like that. So in our model, every single image is squeezed into two, 299, 299, just how they train the model. So the way why this is important is like when they train the neural network, they have certain way of training it. So this, the way they do resize and everything. So here we're just providing the same thing. Now, again, I'll call the magic. After we've done all the optimization magic, you're welcome by what happened exactly with the execution time. This is something you only want, only need to run once, and you can cache that file and use it for deployment later. Now, as usual, you still do the same pre-process. And now I take an image from Wikipedia and I call the doc file, and then I run through the neural network. That's exactly what the slide talked about. And then I run the results. So here, this is the results that are very interesting, right? I want you today is to run your own image and show me what you get out from the 
learning. How good are they? Let's give us some discussion. What you think is great, what is not great, and why is it failing? And again, this is where I want to hear what's the limitation we're facing today, and can we make it better? And can you even optimize this better? But as long as you share the screenshot here, let's say to show us what you recognize. Here, you say just a screenshot here, however you want to do it. Put it on the social media with the link of our collab and share it with your friends. And also, you will submit that to us. That will give you the neural stack. Again, you run this demo. You run with your own image. You take a screenshot, share it to your social media. It can be LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, with a link about this, and tag us if you can. Hopefully, then yeah. we will give you the stick. And Paul, you have something to say? Yeah, sure. So if you want to use the hashtag hashtag twenty twenty vision hack mm -hmm. uh, when you share it socially as well. That would right. be absolutely brilliant. Um, you will be if you check on the Hacker Earth uh, URL there that's scrolling along the bottom, um, 2020visionhack.hackerearth.com, um, and uh, register for, for the hack. We will then send you an email with the link to the form for Intel, which will be, be uh, going live next week. So mm -hmm. it gives you a bit of time as well to, uh, to have a play with this mm -hmm. um, and also say, share socially. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and I'll talk about some of the rules too for the submission. Uh, and I'll keep going for now. And more importantly, I do a comparison so that you can play with different results from other networks. And then I was compared with the official one. So we get, we get slightly different accuracy. Uh, then that's something that we'd like to discuss with you too. And last and more importantly, we have the download links. So this is running on the Colab today, but I think it's much more fun. You can run it locally. So you can plug into your own USB stick. Uh, you can run your own hardware and you can optimize your system for fun or for work. Then we also provide something called the Dev Cloud. Um, extremely similar to what we have here. Uh, once you register, we even provide you better hardware support. So remember we talked about FPGA, we talked about GPU and all that. So Intel actually also provides you all this cloud service for free today if you register. And you can test your system and benchmark against everything without paying a dollar today. So this is one of the best offer I've seen from Intel so far. So you can try before you buy for every AI platform. All right, so um, I think this is the tutorial I want to give you guys. And then I want you to all to basically run it today and give me the feedback. And I'm listening to, if it's broken, that's okay. I'm here for you because I build this myself actually by definition. <laughs> so I have like worked with many of the team members, but at the end I'll collect all the information and create a script for you all for this place. So uh, I will dig a little bit deeper on the sharing part. So because I think people may be confused, I'll stop sharing for a second and share this tab, how it look like when I share. Can you see this? We have a question, Raymond. Oh yes, please. Chris Thomas, um, this is to be run in Colab itself or on the local machine? This is on the remote machine. So actually, Extremely good question because I want to make sure you do this right. I will go back to that and then give you a little bit more detail on how to select local and remote. Brilliant. Thanks, All right. Chris. Brilliant. This is a very good question because I almost forgot. I was about to tell you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is very important because right now, if you can see my screen, this is connected to a host runtime. So this is remote. And that's why it's so powerful because now you can spawn many of these for, for fun. And, but also, think if you do the installation yourself at the bottom, right here, and then you have a Ubuntu machine, I think Ubuntu 18.04, uh, uh, you can try to do the lo run local, uh, local runtime, and you have to provide all this flag and everything. I haven't tested fully yet. I would love to have someone crack the, crack the puzzle for me. Uh, but I know it will run because I have the same script, download it and run locally, but not through this method. But I just basically copy and paste the Python code and copy and paste the script that I provided here. Sounds good. So the scripts are correct by definition. Okay. Yeah. And then the remote host is also a uh, Ubuntu, I think. Okay. Good questions. All right. Let me get back to, and then go, and run it now. Uh, let me get back to the other one. So the sharing. I'll toggle back. Uh, 
here's the part uh, we talk about sharing. Uh, so this is the part we talk about 2020 vision hack. And you can put things like that. But the most important is you, if we share this, you make sure you share the link so we can all enjoy your experience. I think that's one thing we love about AI open community today. So for um, OpenFino, we actually open source uh, platform. So you can find us on GitHub. You can see all the, all the source code behind our work today. So um, as evangelists, I want to make sure this is clear that we're really open about um, everything so that uh, we welcome for you to give us feedback through the system too. Uh, and again, once you've done that, you share it to your friends and make sure you give us this post so that we can validate it and then provide you the stick. Um, I think it's already next year because the submission is end by this year. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be sent out um, early uh, January, I believe. Right. And then once I've done, share us the post or add me to LinkedIn. One way or the other, I'm really waiting for your cool results and all. Oh. Okay, let's go back to the slides where I talk about the last bit of it. Uh, I will just have to wait a little bit to stop sharing and share again. Hmm, someone should build an app for sharing screen. That would be so much faster. <laughs> it's called mm-hmm. I'll throw mm -hmm. that up later on. Yeah, I just keep clicking that button. Maybe it should be automated. All right, back to my slides. All right, Paul, thank you. So the submission deadline is December 30th. Uh, again, um, the submission step will be also provided. You will provide a form and you have to be 18 plus to enter this mini challenge. So there's a set of uh, legal and all those um, uh, things you have to go through and make sure Terms you read that. Conditions? Conditions, yes. Uh, and then 18 plus is a must uh, for this competition. So I got the golden retriever. I'm waiting for the cats. I'm waiting for the snakes. I'm waiting for something special from you, okay? Again, uh, we're in an open community, uh, making sure that we will provide you the most fun, okay? All right, um, this is the link, by the way. I didn't talk about how to get a share link. You basically go to share and then grab this link, and then you can copy and paste to your friends. So, uh, so, this and is, so that's the link to share on your social profile, correct? Exactly. Making sure the key is anyone with the link can see it. So make sure it's not private and everything. And definitely rename this to your own. So right now it's mine. So you make sure when you open my link, save your own copy and then make your own. So that you don't you don't get stuck, right? Because you can edit mine. Mine was protected, right? Quote, quote. So you have to save a copy. That's why I want to make sure the logistics is right. You have to make your own copy <laughs> there. And then if you don't understand it, I can do one more tutorial to make sure you understand what I mean. But you just have to save your own copy so you can edit the file I share because what I share today is comments only. You cannot edit that file yet, but you can make the same copy and you can play with it. Sounds good? Okay, brilliant. Thanks, Raymond. Uh, we've got a question from uh, Anakit. Uh, can good. I install OpenVINO locally on other Linux distribution like Kali Linux based on Debian? That's a very good question because I have an answer for you. Good question, come with a deep dive, deep dive with an answer, right here. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you could ask this, right? So right here, this is all we supported right now, and we have more coming uh, week by week. Uh, as of yesterday, we released 2021.2. 20, we get even better support. So, and if anything, you can compile from the source code from scratch, so you're not limited by the distribution. Does it make sense to you? You can go on the GitHub, download, and just build from scratch. I think most Linux machines will just work fine. I haven't tested all of them. Uh, if you test it, give me a feedback and I would love to see how you did it. Uh, if you have any trouble, go to GitHub. We have a support team behind it. Uh, they basically reply your answer weekly. No, 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 daily. Jesus Christ, I'm so wrong. Daily, they will reply to you daily. Okay, okay. so, so, so not where's, weekly. Where's, where, where, where is the best place to uh, uh, communicate with the, um, the OpenVINO team? Uh, uh, is it on GitHub or on the OpenVINO Intel web pages? So we have two. GitHub is the best for a lot of um, compiling issue and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have, let's say, a pure technical issue, you can go to a forum. If you go to Intel forum OpenVINO, you can post mm -hmm. it there. I will be monitoring too. And last and not least, if it's a small, quick question, come on LinkedIn and find me. I'll be a support and direct for the 
wherever. You know, I'm the mentor for this hack. As long as you register to our hack, and I'll be <laughs> helping you immediately. I think that's the catch, <laughs> right? Paul, right? Am I right? Yeah, yeah. So, so exactly that. When you register on 2020visionhack, um, uh, dot hackerearth.com um, and you will um, can raise any questions throughout phase one in the uh, discussion area of the, um, of the, of the website. Um, you do need to be registered to enter the, the competition for the Intel Neural Stick as well. Um, and uh, winning in through to phase two, you'll get the direct mentor support. Uh, Raymond is one of um, uh, many uh, mentors that we're going to have supporting the teams there mm -hmm. from all the different areas in regards to Intel. Mm -hmm. OpenVINO and the AD Link mm -hmm. um, uh, Edge software, as well as um, Viz AI hardware side as well. So in phase two, you will actually receive one of these devices. This is an AD Link Viz AI developer kit. This has um, a uh, Intel Atom 3940 CPU. It has the Mavidius Myriad X uh, VPU, uh, four gig of RAM, and um, it also um, comes with the AD Link Edge platform which um, enables you to really focus on the model building um, and gives you all the tools to then configure that um, as what we call profiles um, to uh, get the data to and from. So actually when you get to the prototype stage, you're gonna get really well supported from a software side as well to enable you to really focus on the uh, model side of things mm -hmm. um, and inferencing through OpenVINO, which is included in the AD Link Edge Vision um, platform that you get with a Visi AI. They are available for $199 on arrow.com and they're also available on mouser.com as well. Uh, we've got another question come through from uh, Nish Nima. Hi, Nish. Um, can PyTorch be used instead of TensorFlow? Does OpenVINO support other libraries? Uh, so I see no reason why not. Uh, it, you have to go with the Onex and all that. It actually supported. it. We actually have all the documentation behind that too. Uh, yes and yes. <laughs> yes, it's yes. We actually have beyond just TensorFlow. We have uh, in the beginning we talk about all the different open platforms. Yes, mm -hmm. we do have supports. Uh, if not, we can make it because it's open source in a way that we have a new plugin system coming up. So if, if it's not support now, we do have uh, custom layers, things like that you can use to optimize the model. Okay, brilliant. Um, by all means, do uh, answer any more questions uh, before we wrap up soon. Hey, Raymond, I think that was really insightful. Um, I'm sure everybody will appreciate that. Thanks very mm -hmm. much. Right. Um, great opportunity for you, for you guys to be uh, winning uh, a neural stick too. Um, if you think about the process in, in building solutions like this, um, you know, you're going to be using your laptop with an Intel neural stick to uh, start building your models and start to get going. You can then move on to a developer kit like the AD Link Fizzy AI um, hardware with the software configuration that you get in there with the Edge platform. Um, that um, and enables you to then start to work on a standalone device um, and start to collect real-time data, real-time images, and start to, to build even further on your models and update them. And then you, when you want to scale, using AD Link Edge Platform, it enables you to scale out across other devices very, very easily by a replication of the profile, the combination of the applications. Uh, I may be speaking um, uh, unknown language to you uh, with the AD Link Edge terminology, um, now on the December 23rd, I'll be talking you through an overview of AD Link Edge to help you understand that a little bit more. Same time on uh, December 23rd. Um, uh, before I start uh, reviewing some of the live streams we've got coming up, Raymond, uh, do you have any more to share? I would just want to say, um, yeah, so just find us and register. And I'm really looking forward for more results from you all. I have nothing more to share. I spent half an hour talking already. Thank you, guys. Yeah, brilliant. Raymond, thanks very much. It was brilliant. Okay, so um, further live streams throughout the hack. Uh, we had the launch yesterday. That's available on um, YouTube and uh, other social medias. Um, they're very easily found for AD Link technology on the YouTube channel, as well as on Facebook. It's also on go250.ai. Go250.ai is a community website that I created um, for AI Vision, it's an AD Link community. Um, please do check it out. Join the forum. Um, there's some um, great pointers and content in there in regards to the blogs, guides, and also an open forum there for everybody to share their insights and uh, learn from each other. Um, a true community. Um, we've just had the OpenVINO tutorial. Thanks very much, Raymond. Mm -hmm. um, to on the December 22nd, we have Industry Insights episode number one. That is uh, members of Intel and AD Link sharing their insight from actual industrial use cases where um, vision 
could be leveraged and is leveraged to uh, use as the um, as a sensor. And December twenty third, as I mentioned, AD Link Edge Platform Overview by my um, by uh, with myself and Raymond. On January fifth, we will have uh, Industry Insights Episode two, covering manufacturing and energy. January 14th is AdLink Edge Vision Apps. So there are a number of applications that we've created to make the process much easier for you. And we seem to be adding one to the, to, to the platform um, every month at the moment. Um, so, uh, you know, when you get a Viz AI, as an example, um, you get access to the new images with the new applications as well. Um, so we'll be talking through those. On January 18th, um, we will be doing AdLink Edge and OpenVINO and talking about how you get the data output and then getting that across um, the device and, and everywhere else where you need to get the data to and from where you need to. So uh, the next um, the next live stream is covering industry insights, distribution and worker safety, December twenty second at six pm UK, ten am uh, uh, PST. Um, and on whatever channel you are on today, that's the one to watch it on. We'll be broadcasting across all of them. Um, on the Go250 and uh, AdLink profiles, and please do register and check out the um, the the hack. So, just to recap on what the hack is, it's to find industrial problems. Um, and in fact, do you know what? Um, here's a bit of insight. Let's take a look at the computer vision themes for the 2020 vision hack. Manufacturers leverage powerful real-time data from the IoT to increase uptime, perform preventative maintenance, enhance productivity, improve mobile accessibility, and a host of other benefits, like fault detection and enabling higher quality production and quality inspection. Distribution businesses have requirements for asset management, business process efficiencies, and new business models. Considerations like warehouse management, tracking and tracing assets in real time, security and transparency, monitoring asset movement within and around the facility to prevent theft or the misplacement of goods. Workplace safety. Thousands of workers die in industrial accidents each year in the world and a huge amount suffer from non-fatal work-related injuries. Workers, employers and insurance companies collectively face billions of dollars of direct and indirect costs due to industrial accidents and individuals suffer unnecessarily. For example, think about personal protective equipment, PPE detection. Ensure people are wearing the correct equipment for hazardous environments. Fall detection. Enable identification and notification systems when workers experience injury or equipment is damaged. The energy sector is adopting the use of computer vision to enable smarter, automated and more effective sensor data collection. Actionable data available when and where it needs to be. Example uses are wind energy producers identifying maintenance such as dirt accumulation on wind turbines, dead insects and cracks in foundations or towers. In mines, automatic detection of anomalies in mines, for example leaks, fires, smoke, or even production blocks. As you heard from Raymond, you have the opportunity of winning an Intel Neural Stick 2. Once you register on the 2020 Vision Hack page on Hacker Earth, you will receive an email with all the details on how to apply for your Intel Neural Stick 2. There are 100 to be won, so grab them while you can. Phase 1 winners will receive an AD Link Busy AI Developer Kit, which is a bundle of powerful hardware and software to build your prototype with. The hardware is a Smart 2 board, which is industrial ready. It has a 4GB RAM, an Intel Atom 3940 CPU, and an Intel Myriad X VPU, so plenty of power for AI vision. The Vizii also has very intuitive software included with it, the AdLink Edge platform, which has vision tools, and OpenVINO and Node-RED included. As a Phase 2 team member, you will also receive direct support from Intel and AdLink whilst you develop your prototype, so don't worry about support. The final prize. The winning team will win a cash prize of $10,000, but we don't stop there. An amazing opportunity to collaborate with AD Link to validate the prototype with the market. That will include support and create marketing material like a press release, a promo video, a use case, a solution brief, and the support with organizing meetings to validate your prototype with the market. This gives you a great foundation to really push forward in making an impact with your prototype. I think you agree this prize could be life changing for you and your team. So good luck.
So, uh, there we have it. That's the hack, that's the themes, and we can't wait to see what you make. Raymond, thanks very much for your help today. Uh, it's always a pleasure chatting with you, and look forward to catching up next week on the 22nd with Bridget and Niels, uh, sorry, Bridget and Daniel Collins um, to uh, give us their industry insights. Great, thank you. Thank you for hosting. Thanks, everyone. guys. Bye. Good night. I'm not in the habit of taking